And he gets this, which he calls crude oil. Um, me and some of the guys in my chemistry discords that I've been talking to, we personally like to call it uh, cancer juice. Okay, so we, 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 we debunked uh, quite a few of the things. Like I said, I wish she was here, because I would love to hear what he had to say back to this. Uh, but okay, you said, when were you sending out for analysis? Thank you for asking that EH, because that's exactly what I was getting to. Now that I disproved much of what he said, now it's all about action. What am I going to do? Because it is true. What he said is true. Benzene is carcinogenic. Benzene is in my fuel. There are other toxic things in my fuel that need to be dealt with for it to work. Period. That's the truth. He was right about that. But some of the, some of the specifics he went into were just straight up wrong. Okay. And that's what we just proved here. But what will I do? You guys may know. I just got accepted for the 776 Foundation. A $100,000 grant over two years. Mark 5 is going to be built. Okay, but Mark, most importantly, Mark 4.5 is going to be finished. Now, why have I not sent my stuff out for analysis at, the, analysis at the lab? Because I have not finished my machine. If I send my stuff out for analysis before my machine is finished, too many variables would change. I have to finish my machine and get as little variables as possible so that way I have a proper comparison. So we are going to send the stuff out to a lab, get that analyzed, get the efficiency numbers completely accurate. We're going to do all this stuff for Mark 4.5, finish it, because all I have to do for Mark 4.5 is make it continuous now, then it's done. Okay, that's it. But with pyrolysis, that might sound little. Like, oh, there's not going to be many variables that change. Wrong. With pyrolysis, making something continuous can completely change your products because there'll be different temperature changes in the machine. I need to have consistent variables. Run the machine for consistent amounts of time. Put the same types of plastic in there. We have to get down to the science. And I can send my stuff to the lab with every single type of plastic and get my results, share them with everybody, right? And then you're going to see what's in it, how much is in it. Then we know how to deal with it. What is benzene? Okay, let's start there. So benzene is a hydrocarbon, okay? It's a hydrocarbon that is naturally found in crude oil. Therefore, it's in pretty much every product or constituent product of crude oil and that includes but it's not limited to gasoline um and plastic okay because plastic as we know is a product of crude oil now benzene is a carcinogenic it is a known carcinogen in fact a a group one carcinogen okay so benzene is a group one carcinogen and essentially what that means is, is it's pretty bad. It's a pretty bad car carcinogen. This is not the type you want to play around with. This is a pretty bad one up there. See, there's just some general information about it. It dissolves in water a little bit. It has a sweet odor. It gives gasoline the smell we're used to, right? Okay. Nonetheless, it's not good, okay? There's tons of research on it. You don't really want it. It is... Now, here's the thing about benzene. Let's also break down some truths about benzene, Okay. Because, yes, it is a carcinogen, but that does not always mean something is horrible just because it's carcinogen, like an evil thing. Okay, so benzene is a base chemical, okay? Benzene, toluene, xylene, these are base chemicals. These are chemicals that are like some of the most fundamental building block chemicals of many things. So benzene is actually one of the top 20 most used chemicals. So look, if I, were, if I search, what is benzene used for? Look, you're going to see... It has a ton of uses. Yes, it's carcinogenic, but benzene can be used to make plastics, resins, nylons, synthetic rubbers, dyes, detergents, drugs, pesticides. Benzene is one of the most used chemicals. So, uh, look, benzene, top 20 chemicals. If you search this, you know, benzene ranks in the top 20 most used and most useful chemicals, period. Because it is. It's just it's just a very useful chemical. So it has market value. Yes, it's carcinogenic. We don't want it in our fuels. But if we can extract it from the fuels, it actually has tons of use and tons of market value. But, so analysis of plastic pyrolysis oil separation. This is the most direct, as direct as you can get. Because this is not analysis of crude oil. This is not analysis of my balls in your face. This is analysis of plastic pyrolysis oil. So this is directly what I'm making. Let's take a roundabout guess and say, you know, maybe it's it's 30% benzene. No. He claimed roughly, he was like, 
He said that my oil, my plastic pyrolysis oil, could be potentially up to 30% benzene. Now I'm gonna send this, put this uh, this thing in the chat. Benzene is, a, is allowed at concentrations at 1% or less in our fuels of this world because benzene, the safe limit for benzene is literally one ppm. Let me give you an analogy for the danger of that or, or how or hazardous it is. Similar uh, breakdown would be one circular centimeter of my nuts in your mouth is a safe allowable limit to prevent stretching and permanent jaw damage, right? One spherical centimeter, the components of my plastic pyrolysis oil. Benzene is actually the second lowest amount. He said 30% of my fuel, okay? This paper shows that benzene is 6.5%. 6.15% mole weight of the fuel. So surely he was talking about ethyl benzene and just kind of like paraphrasing it. No, wrong. In chemistry, one of the first things you're going to learn is that you, this is not just a, a, a minor change. When you add a different element to another element, when they are reacted together, it is a different compound. Ethyl benzene is actually not even carcinogenic to the same degree benzene is at all, which was true. He said benzene is only allowed in our gasoline by 1% because it's that carcinogenic, right? Ethyl benzene, how much is a how much is allowed in gasoline? Let's see. Up to 15% ethyl benzene is allowed in gasoline. It is also present in up to 25% in technical grades of xylenes, okay? So ethyl benzene is way less harmful than benzene because the limit is 15 times more the allowable amount. Allowable amount of ppm of benzene. How much is that? What? Oh, look, look, look. It says 0.1 ppm over a 10 hour work shift. Okay. For benzene. But look at this. Allowable amount of ppm for ethyl benzene. 100 ppm. So no. Benzene is not a predominant factor in my pyrolysis oil. Debunked. It is a factor in there. Now, 6% is high because 6% is way higher than the allowable amount. But it's not as bad as he was saying because he said 30%. We're way below that. So that's just the raw oil. We have 6% in the plastic pyrolysis oil according to this paper. And so what can you do with that? Well, I read some out. So we, we have catalytic distillation, hydrogenation. Extractive distillation, we have fractional distillation, once again, catalytic distillation with the alkylation catalysts and, um, you know, utilizing ethers, all these types of different things. The main thing I was trying, the main point I'm trying to make is this right here. There are many ways to deal with benzene. I'll tell you why there's so many ways that exist in this world. Because benzene's in in our crude oil, naturally, and we can't have much in gasoline, right? So by nature, we're going to devise ways to deal with this. Also remember, benzene is one of the most used chemicals in the entire world, period. One of the 20 most used chemicals. So for it to be such a heavily used chemical, right, We that means that we must be extracting it out of the crude oil because if we weren't readily getting it out of crude oil at a monetarily efficient rate, how could it be one of the most top 20 chemicals in the world? So there's ways to get it out that exist, plenty. Um, I guess you could say economically viable way is extractive distillation. And extractive distillation... Benzene boils at 85 degrees Celsius. It's, it's right there. So there's no room to really get the benzene off efficiently. It's just too close. So extractive distillation to recover marketable benzene is one of the top ways to actually uh, get rid of benzene. And extractive distillation is essentially just... You're distilling at very specific temperatures to remove certain things. Now, this other paper we're talking about here goes into the distillation of, you know, these products, and it's using vacuum distillation to, to uh, decrease the amount of azeotropes. And what are azeotropes? Azeotropes are basically when oils mix together, kind of just form together or stuck together. So if you have an azeotrope, let's say I have gasoline, and it has azeotrope with the benzene. Even when it distills over, there's still going to be some benzene like permanently bonded to it. Now, stuff like vacuum distillation is a way of preventing those to minimize those. And the big uh, crude oil refineries actually use vacuum distillation as well. I was my now my distiller, the one that blew up and left me looking like Michael Jackson, right? Actually, was meant to be a vacuum distiller. That 
had it not turned the vacuum pump on and built up pressure and blew up. It says to meet the 0.62 volume percent benzene requirement, more than half the refineries according to the EPA indicated in the 2008 pre-compliance reports, they plan to install new benzene reduction facilities. So clearly removing benzene is something that has been studied and has been an issue and there already exist benzene reduction facilities in refineries. Okay, that's the whole point I'm trying to tell everybody. These things already exist. I don't have to start from day one trying to figure out how we remove these things. They already exist solutions, okay? Because this stuff is already in crude oil. That's my argument the whole time and I'm just backing it up now with the receipts of science. It's a marketable thing to say that not only am I making fuel from plastic, but I'm making benzene from plastic too. In fact, let me show you guys something. Benzene from plastic pyrolysis. Look at this research paper here. I'll send this in the chat too. I'll send this in the chat too. Pyrolysis of mis mixed plastic waste for the recovery of benzene, toluene and xylene. They want to recover it. Why? Uh, what did I say in the beginning? Benzene, toluene, and xylene are base chemicals. Base chemicals. They're used for almost everything. So there's a ton of market value. So if we can make these fuels from plastic and get something out that can be used for almost everything. Look, they've used, they put benzene in glue. They put benzene in rubber. They put benzene in detergent. They put benzene in deodorant. Literally, they put it in almost everything. Now, is that moral? Is that right? I don't know. But the point is, it's one of the top 20 most used chemicals in the world. Extractive distillation is probably the most cost-effective solution because extractive distillation does not require expensive catalysts. And extractive distillation is actually what I already have to do anyway to get the gasoline out of my, uh, my products. In his video, he said that when I ran the truck, the diesel truck that I ran, I was exposing everybody around that truck to unnecessary levels of benzene. Burning it in an engine, which doesn't really get rid of all of it, there's still a little bit of exhaust that's just benzene and it just sort of sprays out all over the road and in your neighborhood. And all now let me, let, me, let me show you why that, okay, we can't prove anything because we don't have the actual tools. I'm not, I didn't over there test the exhaust. Let me show you why that was highly unlikely, okay? Benzene boiling point. Now, benzene mainly is an azeotrope of gasoline, okay? Gasoline boiling point. Look. <clears throat> Let's see, which one, where are we at here? Okay, look. Benzene boiling point, 176. Fahrenheit, 80 degrees Celsius, okay? Gasoline boiling point, 165 to 175 Fahrenheit, just teetering at the edge of benzene. So it's very close. So if you distill out gasoline, you're likely to get benzene. What is that, uh, Celsius? What is uh, 175 C? Oh, it's pretty much going to be the same thing as it was before, duh. I could have easily done that. 79 C, so look. Benzene boiling point is 80 degrees Celsius. Gasoline is 79 degrees Celsius. Okay, look at diesel. Let's look at diesel, the diesel boiling point. Okay, now the diesel I put in that truck was distilled out. Okay, meaning that I brought the diesel to its boiling point. Okay, look, 325 to 675 degrees Fahrenheit, 163 to 30. 357 degrees Celsius is diesel's boiling point. I just told you that benzene's was 80 degrees Celsius or 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Diesel's is almost double, okay, in every way. So when you're distilling things, once you get far out of something's boiling point range, the amount of benzene that's going to come over is going to be minuscule. Why? Because that's like saying gasoline is in diesel. That's just not how it works. The boiling points are not lining up. All right? That's just not how it works. So when I put the diesel product in the truck, you can watch the YouTube video of my, that I have myself called Distilling Diesel Out of Plastic. You will see the temperatures in that video line up with the temperatures right here. 
a very high temperature to distill out to the diesel. Much, much higher than benzene's boiling point, right? So like I said, I can't prove anything because I didn't have meters there around the truck's exhaust to say. But to say that I was exposing everybody around that truck to crazy high levels of benzene, I just don't think it's a realistic claim. Because how can that be the case if benzene literally has a boiling point almost two half of that of diesel, right? That's just not how distillation works. Because like I said, if that was the case, then I had to be worried about gasoline being in my diesel. I don't have to be worried about that because diesel is nearly double the the ga- the um <clears throat> the range the uh the boiling point range of the blue e benzene and the gasoline so it's not even a worry uh, and that's just how it works honestly so that claim is out the window